السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه وبعد Dear viewers, welcome to a new episode of your program Ask Quda Our phone numbers beginning with area code are 002 131 or 132 Email address is ask at huda.tv and the Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah official. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, you can start uh, dropping your phone calls whenever you like, inshallah. Meanwhile, let me ask some of the questions which I received. The first question is, um, I would prefer to conceal the name um, because of the nature of the question. The question says, there are two men who announce their interest in me at the same time. So the sister um, has two proposals for marriage. My question is, can, I, can each of them come home for me to see them and get to know them before deciding who would like to be suitable for me? Absolutely, yes, no problem. Because the prohibition is concerning only whenever you agree to one and you give him a word. Which doesn't mean that you must complete the marriage ceremony and the, the entire marriage process, no. But the Prophet ﷺ said, وَلَا يَخْطِبْ أَحَدُكُمْ عَلَىٰ خِطْبَةِ أَخِيهِ حَتَّى يَرَعْ Which means, it is not permissible for anyone to propose to a girl whom there is another person who already proposed and uh, they've agreed to him. But if he decided that uh, he is not interested or the girl is not interested and they broke up, so there is no engagement which is just mere promise, in this case, it is permissible for you to propose to her. So in your case, you're the person whom you receive in several proposals. No problem. You can see as many people as possible because uh, you're looking for a person who is most suitable. It is not only suitable for you because if he's suitable for you, then you're suitable for him likewise. So this is, uh, this is something perfectly uh, legitimate. No problem. Um, uh, Iqbal Sayyid Brother Iqbal says What can I do with interest money That I got from a commercial bank uh, Can I give it to relatives Or madrasa um, Any interest Which is generated On some money That you deposit in the bank Particularly in a saving account If that is the only Way that you can deposit Or save your money somewhere Then there is no blame upon you to save in that commercial bank or to put your money in that commercial bank. And if there is an interest which is generated on that, you should get rid of it. Either by giving it to um, uh, da'wah means, giving it to poor people, to an orphanage, to a, a school, to a hospital. But of course, we agreed before that you should not put it in the masjid, in the masjid facility. Um, it could be also invested in uh, building or maintaining the bathroom facility that is attached to the masjid, the gardening, the landscape of the masjid, uh, but not in the masjid itself. So giving it to poor people, giving it to schools, giving it to hospitals or and orphanages is permissible as well. Um, Sharmila Ihsan says, in I would assume that the questioner is a sister. She says, uh, is it right that up to two weeks a traveler can offer his salah as qasr and jama' salah? This is one of the views. Uh, that is the opinion of the Imam Hanifa up to 15 days. But the opinion of the vast majority of the Muslim Jews are four days. So if you're traveling for uh, 
three or four days, not including the day of the days of traveling. I'm talking about once you arrive to a place. Uh, if you decide to stay more than four days, according to the, <coughs> the opinion of the vast majority of the Jews, if you decide to stay in one place more than four days, then you should pray regular. But four days and less than that, not including the traveling days, you can still shorten the prayer. And also, in another valid opinion, you can uh, combine the prayers likewise. The two prayers of Dhuhr and Asr, at the time of either one of them, and the two prayers of Maghrib and Isha at the time of either one of them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Ask Wada. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, Sheikh. Good evening to you, Brother Muhammad. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, Sheikh, I want to ask about the uh, uh, the fastings of the middle of the month, which is 13, 14, and 15. Mm. Uh, I was wondering whether you can put it together with the one with, with the one which is also prescribed by our Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mondays and Thursdays. They said that uh, you cannot put the two together, but uh, what is the uh, strongest view, Sheikh? What do you mean you cannot put them together? I mean you have to choose one out of the, out of the two since they are both sunnah. Okay, well, I got that's your what question. they said, of course. I got your question. I think I got your question. Thank you, brother. Muhammad from Nigeria. Uh, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated in the sound hadith, saying, Awsani Khalili bithalath. Al Khalil is the best companion. He said, My best companion, and he refers by that to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, My best companion enjoined upon me three things. Uh, one of whom he said, To fast three days of every month. That is referring to what is known as the three white days. They are called white because of the night is bright because the moon is almost full moon. These days are the days of the 13th, 14th, and the 15th of each lunar calendar. If somebody has the habit of fasting on Mondays and Thursdays on regular basis, then the days of 13th or 14th or 15th either one of these days fail on Monday and Thursday, we hope that he will get double the reward, the reward for fasting on these days on regular basis, Mondays, and also the reward of fasting the three white days, which are highly recommended by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there is no contradiction whatsoever. The three white days, if a person could not fast on these three days, then you can scatter them, you can make them up, you can fast them before the 13th or after the 15th, whenever you have a chance. Because the main idea behind fasting for three days is that since Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-An'am, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا Whosoever brings a good deed, a single hasana, Allah will reward them for it ten times thereof. So fasting three days will be rewarded ten times. Three times ten, that is thirty. So it will be similar to fasting for the whole month. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zainu from Ethiopia. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yeah, welcome to the program, Zainu. أخي كان يهيرني السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام السلام عليكم شيخ Welcome to the program I can hear go ahead and present your question please uh, is, it, is it permissible to say السلام عليكم to non-muslims Okay got your question Yeah this is, this is yeah yeah Okay. Thank you. 
Whenever the Jews used to come to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and would greet him with what sounded like Assalamu Alaikum, while it was nothing but Assalamu Alaikum, he would reply by saying the same, Wa Alaikum, and upon you too. It's like when you say to somebody, have a good day, and he says, same to you, or you too. Have a great day, have a beautiful morning, same to you. Whenever you greet with the greeting of Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, it is an invocation which consists of three supplications, peace, mercy, and the blessings. We ask Allah to bless the believers, to have mercy upon the believers, and to spread peace upon the believers. So whenever a non-Muslim greets you with a greeting, you reply back with the same. He says, Assalamu alaikum, you say, Wa alaikum assalam. But whenever you begin a non-Muslim with a greeting, you can greet them with their own greeting, such as, good morning, good evening, with what they comprehend. Um, how are you today? How are you this evening? Good afternoon, the greetings which they are familiar with. Jazakallahu khairan. Zainu from Ethiopia. Assalamu alaikum. Taslim from the case say Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sheikh. I have a question regarding uh, the Zohar prayer when we reach and already Zohar has started. I have not uh, uh, prayed the Sunnah, four Rakat Sunnah. You uh, see? Now we uh, enter the mosque and uh, continue with the Imam. Mm. And then after uh, completing the Fard, uh, have we to repeat those four Rakats or not? Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you, Akhi Tasneem, for asking this question. Uh, let me elaborate on the importance of the Ratib Sunnah before and after Zuhr, so that more and more people will benefit and capture the virtues of these emphatic Sunnah, inshallah. Let me do that after collecting some more questions. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Ali from Nigeria, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Good evening, Sheikh. Good evening to you, Akhi Ali. Go ahead. Uh, I think I was wondering whether um, you will tell us a little about uh, masturbation in Islam. Is it halal or haram? On and what are the side effects, if any? Which act you said? Masturbation. Masturbation, okay. Yes, yes, okay. masturbation. Thank you very much. Okay. Brother Ahmed from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam ya Good evening. Good evening to you, Brother Ahmed. Yes, my question is regarding uh, greetings, shaking hands. Shaking hands? Yes. With whom? Some uh, top government officials, some diplomats, they shake hands with opposite sex. Mm. But their intention, they said, is strictly diplomatic. Hmm. So what is that uh, What is that in Islam? What's the rule regarding shaking hands with the opposite sex in Islam? Tayyib, I got your question. Thank you. Um, Brother Musa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa alaikum Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mute your TV, please, Musa. Let me grab some drink. Musa from Nigeria. Musa from Nigeria. My question is this. Assalamu alaikum. Akhi Musa, please mute your TV set. Jazakallah khairan, Musa, try again, please. And if you can hear me, 
whoever would give us a call, make sure that you're talking to me from your handset. Uh, you cannot be talking on the phone while watching the TV meanwhile because it will create an echo. Thank you. Jazakum Allah Sister Hakima from Somalia. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Go ahead, Sister Hakima. I want to get, I want to get married, um, but the brother's family, he is saying that we have to either wait or we can, or we have to leave the country to get married because of culture and because I'm older than uh, the groom. Uh, what is the permissibility of this? You say do you want to get married, but his family or whoever is saying that you have to wait or do something about the marriage certificate. Am I right? Yes, because of, I have to wait or leave because of the culture. To do what? You see, Sister Hakima, you need to mute your TV so that you can hear me clearly and I can hear you without an echo. Okay. Okay, please mute your TV and repeat your question. Okay. I'm, so, I'm sorry. That's okay. So, or you can go um, to another room. The problem is, is that um, the person that wants to marry me is much younger than I am. So therefore, his um, family is saying that that would be, because of the culture, that would be shameful. So if we want to get married, we have to get married right away and then leave. And the then country. leave the country? Yes, leave Why? the country. <laughs> Why leave, leave the country because the culture of the people is such that they will talk about the they'll talk about us and they'll talk about his family. Okay. Are they talking bad about the Prophet peace be upon him as well? Um talking about because he's married to an older woman. I understand. My question is do people, do Muslim people, you're still in the same room and your TV is loud. Uh, do people in your culture criticize the Prophet, peace be upon him, for marrying more than once uh, a woman who's much older than him? Yes. Or uh, they, they criticize the Prophet for that? They don't, um, you know, I'm not of the same culture as he is. So it, it really, I'm really confused about it myself, but... Sister um, Hakima, Sister Hakima, take my advice. If he's okay with you, you guys are you're having chemistry and you're happy, he's a good Muslim, you're a good Muslim and you want to get married, it doesn't matter how old you are and how old is he, go ahead and get married. He doesn't need a permission from no one. His culture is not going to marry you. It's only him. If his family, his parents are okay with that, uh, if they are not, he just needs to um, bring them to an understanding that this is not haram, rather it's permissible. And if he finds a woman he, whom he loves, and whom you love, and you appreciate, and you think that uh, you, know, you want to spend the rest of your lives together, go ahead and get married. This is the sharia, ah, this is what Allah um, prescribed. Uh, as long as you're both compatible, Age is not really a factor and should not determine whether should we get married or not, whether you're older than him or he is uh, older than you. Thank you, Sister Hakima from Somalia. Um, Tasneem from the KSA asked earlier about that if you enter the masjid barely before Zuhr prayer, so that you didn't get a chance to pray the four rak'ahs before Zuhr prayer. Can I make it up after we pray the jama'ah? He's asking this question, obviously because he is familiar with the prophetic advices in this regard. In one hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, whoever observes 12 volunteer rak'ahs every day, on a regular basis, Allah will build them a house in paradise. The 12 rak'ahs uh, conclude uh, and include four rak'ahs before Zuhr. Two by two according to the vast majority of the madhahib and according to the Hanafi madhab, four rak'ahs consecutive 
with a middle tashahud like the Zuhr prayer exactly. Um, and also there is another hadith which says whoever maintains praying four rak'ahs before Zuhr and four rak'ahs after Zuhr, these are all um, voluntary prayers, supergatory prayers. They're called nawafil but emphatic sunan or sunnatul ratiba. Allah the Almighty will forbid hellfire from touching his flesh. So can I make it up if I didn't have a chance to pray it before Dhuhr? Yes, you may make it up after Dhuhr. And after you pray the four rak'ahs or the two rak'ahs because it's either two or four after Dhuhr. You want to pray the four before and four after so that you will get the maximum benefit, you can do that. And if you miss the four before Dhuhr, you can make it up after. Brother Shiraz from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Shiraz. Alaikum assalam. Welcome to the um, program. I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. First one, if I make wudu at home uh, and then I put my socks on uh, and then in college, does that mean I can wipe over my socks when I pray? Okay, you made wudu. Second, que second question. No. Second question is, what is the ruling on debating? For example, debating with a deviant sect. Um, I was born into a uh, Sufi fam family, however, I realized later on that um, the guidance of Muhammad peace be upon him is the best guidance. And so my question is, like, is it my responsibility now to uh, speak to my family or debate with them, or how does it work out? Please could you shed some light for that, on that matter? Okay, let me begin by answering your second question. Then your first question I will answer in the same order it was received. I wouldn't begin with the debate because this is not what Allah began with, especially with the family members. Allah the Almighty says, أُدْعُ إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِهِ أَحْسَنَ I believe 125 Surah Al-Nahl. أُدْعُوا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكْ So the entire da'wah revolves around the three elements. بِالْحِكْمَةِ Wisdom وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ The kind, the gentle reminder. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ And جَادِلْهُمْ الْجِدَالِ means from مجادلة which means argument or debate. And argue with them even when you argue with one which is best. My main purpose is not to prove they are wrong and uh, you're deviant. My main purpose is to guide them. I'm not only talking about your family. I'm not only talking about Muslims who, who do some false practices. I'm talking about giving da'wah to anyone because this is a divine doctrine with regards to giving da'wah at large. Ud'u ila sabili rabbik bil hikmati وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي أَحْسَنِ Vast majority of people, when you begin your da'wah with them, with a debate, with the purpose of putting them down, or showing them that they are fault, and all their life they have been deviant, they will take it personal, especially family members, more especially parents and grandparents. Like, are you coming to teach me? I'm your dad. I'm your mom, I'm your grandfather. You're coming now to teach me? We brought you up, we, 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 and all of that. So, my best bet in this regard is to avoid the debate. Rather, to introduce your understanding through your right practices. That is indeed the best form of da'wah. I know that some callers are on the line, but I want to share this with you. A couple of days ago, I had a European girl. She visited me and uh, she invited her mom. They were uh, in a visit uh, to Egypt for a few days. And um, she happened to come and visit and she brought her mom who is not Muslim yet. Okay? Uh, hoping that she will benefit of the da'wah and she may uh, accept Islam. And I asked her mother a question. Are you okay with your daughter accepting Islam? Because that was recent. Just a 
two years or maybe less. She said, I'm very much okay because she has improved a great deal. She has two daughters. One of them is very naughty, is very bad. She terribly treats them badly. But this girl, ever since she accepted Islam, she is the most beautiful. She is the pleasure of my life. That's why she's coming with her, she's traveling with her, and all of that. I asked her, why do you think that she have changed to the better? She said, I'm pretty sure because of her faith, because of her religion. I wanted to hear that even though I was certain. I want to tell you by the end, alhamdulillah, and after two meetings, the mother to accept Islam by the grace of Allah. But my point is, from my experience and surveys of asking many of those who have accepted Islam and their families, those who accepted Islam and they uh, started having better manners, respecting their family members, particularly the parents, because this is what Islam teaches, they have impressed their family members. And they were the main cause for their parents accepting Islam. Uh, to the point that I have a young girl in elementary school. Uh, she decided to enter into a Muslim school that was in um, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Then, after a while, she decided to wear a scarf. And my next visit to them a few months later, the whole family have entered Islam because of the girl. Because of the improvement in her akhlaq, in her manners, as how she treated her parents. The whole family have accepted Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Amina from Kenya. I'm sorry, Sister Amina, please try again. I know that you're online for so long. Please try again. And I'm sorry I won't be able to make it to Kenya in March because there has been double booking um, and they have changed the date. Maybe, inshallah, in another time. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, the Kenyan Muslim community. I was so looking forward to visit you, but unfortunately I won't be able to make it this time. Now, let me resume what I was talking about. So leave the debate for now. Okay, leave the debate for now. Rather, your personal manners, your personal behavior towards your parents and your family members is the greatest means of giving da'wah to them. Then afterward, whenever you discuss, you discuss the major matters, like you present the da'wah in the form of a question to your dad, for instance, what do you think of this ayah? What does it mean? وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ So any, any elder would like to teach the youngsters, and they would always remain in their eyes as youngsters. So maybe when they are introduced into this ayah and the ayah of Surah Ghafir and many of these references for the first time as they have to explain it. Okay, I know it's hard but it is not impossible though. In addition to, do not forget the power of making dua. Keep in mind that um, our purpose is to give them guidance, is to bring them to the truth, not to challenge them. Not to prove that they are wrong. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Nadia from the KSA. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, yeah, Sheikh, I want uh, to ask you a question. I think I told you about my uh, mother. And uh, now I want to ask you about uh, something about the grave. That, uh, that hadith uh, which is mentioned about uh, that we should not build the uh, grave. Uh, what is that exactly meaning? You should because, not build a grave? Uh, the grave. Uh, yeah, you said the hadith that says we should not build a grave. Yeah, like uh, that uh, we should not uh, build it. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, not the, not to make it uh, with a brick or like that. It should be mud and this, right? So, uh, but I just want to ask you um, that in uh, our country, I know many people are doing this, but uh, for my mother's grave, it is with the mud. But uh, when you ask them to put the name, they put the boundary of the marble around the grave. But uh, they said it is not uh, the part of grave. It is outside of the grave. So uh, they said there was strongly uh, the building needs. Uh, when they build the graves, uh, it is the structure is from the floor, I mean, from the grave itself. So this is not like that. My mother's grave is not like that. 
But I just want to ask you that building the only put the marble as, as a boundary around the grave, is it okay or wrong? I am writing the name also on the marble, but that also doesn't touch the grave. It is at the back. So mm. is it correct or wrong? Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, in the last episode of um, Gardens of the Pious, when I discussed this matter, and I said that the Prophet ﷺ said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, لا تدع قبرا مشرفا إلا سويته. That make sure that whenever you see a grave which is elevated, level it so that it will be level to the ground. And yes, there is a prohibition of constructing the graves so that they would look like homes. But putting a marker of a marble or whatever, something very moderate is permissible. To recognize this is your mother's grave or whoever's grave so that when people come to visit, this is permissible, no problem with that. The prohibition is concerning constructing a grave which would look like a room or a house. This is not permissible. It becomes um, permissible maybe if it is in a land where there is a water leak and there is a, a fear that um, uh, of uh, stealing the dead bodies, the corpse and all of that. So this is something different. But in, on, in ordinary conditions, the graveyard should be all leveled. And there is no problem with putting a marker of a moderate, uh, you know, um, you know, whether marble or any kind of stone to recognize the person. Why do I say moderate? Because you know that in America, for instance, and in the West in general, people pay a lot of money for that piece of marble. Sometimes it costs uh, a few thousands for a piece of marble as a marker to be placed on the grave. This is not permissible in Islam because this money is wasted. All what you need just a marker to define and identify the grave of this person or that person. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Musa from Nigeria, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, yes, yeah, I wanted to ask with a uh, phone call to Islamic during Islamic culture. Trust me, I didn't get the question. Okay, I want to ask Mira if it's permissible to make phone calls during Islamic worship. Is it permissible to make phone calls during Islamic? Courtship. Islamic lecture? Islamic courtship. I, I didn't get the last word. Islamic courtship. Islamic courtship. Islamic uh, relationship. Lecture? Islamic relationship. Islamic, what is relationship? It? Yeah, what is an Islamic relationship? Musa, Hello? yeah, Musa, what do you mean by saying Islamic relationship? Yeah, Islamic courtship. That is loving somebody that you want to. Hello. I'm listening. Hello. Akhi Musa, I can hear you. Go ahead. I'm really uh, excited to know about the Islamic relationship. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima from Nigeria. Wa alaikum assalam. Ya Sheikh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Sister Fatima. How are you? Yes, my question is my husband is. Uh, it is definitely not our phone line. Okay, Sister Fatima from Nigeria, please try again. And brothers and sisters, let's take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes. Stay tuned. <laughs> TV strives to remain the premier English language Islamic channel in the world. And to do so, we need your input. Send us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback through email at feedback at hoda.tv.
Hoda TV is committed to helping others. So why not help Hoda TV share the message of Islam worldwide? Take part in helping spread the authentic message of Islam based on the Quran and the Sunnah throughout the world by sponsoring Hoda TV. Don't miss this unique opportunity to gain the reward from Allah. This is the Dean the This is the Dean the Dean This is the Dean Show. 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 Peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Dean Show. From time to time, we sometimes we answer some of your questions. We have so many important issues that we're dealing with here on the Dean Show, and we encourage you to come back here every week. And if you don't catch us on the TV station, you can go to thedeanshow.com where all of our shows are there. Uh, it is important for us when we look at the issue of holiday myths, uh, that we look at the whole picture. And from the beginning of time, people worshipped the Creator in different ways. The Quran tells us in the chapter of the Bee, Surah so An-Nahl, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا Maryam, how are you? Good, alhamdulillah. Thank you for being with us on the Dean Show. You're welcome. So how old are you again? I'm eight years old. I didn't want to get that wrong. Eight years old. And you've memorized how many juz of the Quran? I memorized 21 juz from the Quran. 21 juz. Uh, as you know that there is no concept of clergyman in Islam. There isn't? There is not. Okay. It, and this idea is supposed to be very liberating. Nobody comes between you and your creator. Okay. You do not need an operator. Mm -hmm. It's a direct call. So Islam rejects the whole notion of clergyman. So a sheikh, imam is a title that is given to a person like myself um, when the community feels that you're worthy of it. And it's just a title out of respect. This is the God wafts the clouds. He is the cleaver of the daybreak. Then split the earth in clefts. Is indeed a sign for people who reflect. Reflections. There is not an animal in the earth or a flying creature flying on two wings. But they are nations like you. We have neglected nothing in the book. Then, to their Lord, they will be gathered. Have you not seen how God wafts the clouds? <laughs> He is the cleaver of the daybreak. Then split the earth in clefts.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have Sister Badria on the phone from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Badria. Wa alaikum salam, ya Sheikh. Go ahead, please. Wa alaikum salam, ya Sheikh. Um, my question is, I have only one question. Um, if, if a man divorces his wife three times, and, and the wife did not finish her, either the man dies, um, uh, will, uh, will, that, will his property be shared with the wife? Okay. Barakallahu fiqh. Jazakallahu khairan. Got your question. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Bashir from Nigeria. Yes, wa alaikum salam. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to the program. Shukran, shukran. Um, I think the question, Brother Musa, I was trying to ask you is, is it permissible to call somebody in a relationship for example, if you want to marry a girl, is it permissible for you to call her or to chat her before the marriage? I think this is the question you wanted to ask you. Okay. Do you know the brother? Yes, I know him. Then you have a good intention. Well, I thought of something else. That's why I wanted uh, further clarification from him. Because why would you call it an Islamic relationship? Why wouldn't you just say that if you want to get engaged or marry somebody, can you talk to her? Can you phone her? Can you chat with her? Why doesn't he just make it easier for us? Okay, but since you, uh, you know him and you think that this is what he meant, I would be happy to answer your question or his question. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah feek. <laughs> Sister, uh, this is Musa's question. Uh, Sister Fatima from Nigeria. We should have an independent line for Nigerian callers. Sister Fatima, Assalamu Alaikum. Sister Fatima, Assalamu Alaikum. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? I hear you, Sister Fatima. Go ahead, please. Okay. My question is as a woman who is observing it down for. Uh, either, either of the widow, what is the best prayer I can make for my husband? Surah al-Ikhlas, Allah, or there is anything more than this that can meet him directly into his grave. Depends to her. Okay, you're, you're talking about somebody who lost her husband. Yes, and yes. You said about the idda, which is four months and ten days. What about it? What you can do and what you cannot do yes, during, during the idda? During the idda, during... They tried the whole time of my Eidah because around, right now I'm performing my Eidah. So what is the best dua I can make for him? You can make... Hello? Yeah, what is the day you can make what? What is the last word? Why does it always get disconnected at the last word? First of all, may Allah have mercy on your late husband and may Allah give you strength and grant you patience. Um, you know, um, pardon me and bear with me if I'm, very, if I'm being very particular because if I misinterpret one word and I give you a different answer, it can be very problematic, okay? And it's not only me, um, uh, and I'm not answering only you as a questioner. And there are many people who are watching. So I want to make sure that I get the question right so that hopefully, inshallah, I'll give the right answer. Sister Khadija from the USA. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Khadija. Welcome to Ask Wada. Welcome, Salam Shah. Um, I have like five questions. Five questions. So, <laughs> is it hala? Is it permissible to go to Hajj with my mom as my mahram, or do I need a male mahram? Okay. And is it permissible to go to Hajj if, like, I'm so, like somebody I know changed their name due to papers reasons? Is it permissible for them to go to Hajj with that name, with that changed name? Okay. And I heard some people say that it's not permissible to sleep during Maghrib and, you know, Asr and Maghrib. Is that something in Islam or is that just a bidah? Okay. And 
if I have an intention of doing something or I say that I'm going to do something in my head, do I have to keep that intention or keep my word? Okay, you mean would that consider to be a vow or mere, um, you know, thoughts? So I don't say it out loud, but I say it in my head. For example, I say I will go here in my head. Do must I keep my word in that? Will I be held accountable for that? Okay. And my sister asks if it's permissible for if a little kid is playing games and the game is like a cooking game and it asks for them to put pork in the food, is it permissible to play that game or no? Oh, in the game that they ask you to put pork in the food, even in the game? Yeah. Uh, we're going to start making our own games. <laughs> I'm working on that, actually. Okay. Sister Khadija, where are you from? Don't tell me from Nigeria. I know that you're calling from the USA. Yes, New York. Okay. I'm actually from Gambia, but Gambia. I'm just temporarily here. Okay, okay, okay. May Allah make it easy for you, and thank you for calling in. And uh, inshallah, I'll do my best to answer all your questions during this episode if I have time. Okay, um, allow me brothers and sisters to stop taking any more phone calls because I'd like to answer these questions. The last will be this call, brother Idris from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Idris. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead, brother, quickly, please. Okay. Taib. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Brother Ali from Nigeria asked, very specifically about masturbation. What is the ruling of masturbation in Islam? We find that in uh, a couple ayahs in the Quran, whether in Surah Al-Mu'minur or in Surah Al-Ma'arij, when Allah the Almighty says about the traits of the believers in Surah Al-Mu'minun, for instance, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرٌ مَلُومِينَ uh, which means and among the traits of the believers who are successful as it says in the very beginning المؤمنون, then it says in uh, number six those uh, uh, five and six those who guard their private parts al-furuj is plural of al-farj and al-farj is a very polite word that Allah chose to describe one's private part whether it's a male or a female private part Hafidun, they guard their private parts. They guard their chastity. And they do not extend their sexual desire to other than their spouses. They're not blameworthy in this case. But um, anything beyond that is not permissible, including masturbation. Or sexually stimulating oneself in order to uh, end up with a sexual discharge. When is it permissible? You just say that it is not permissible. Yes, because this is what Allah said. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ But in case of fear of falling into an act of adultery, if a person is in a situation where he is afraid that he may get or indulge into this act of fornication. So relief in oneself is haram in this case, but it is a lesser haram than committing fornication. Okay? And now I would like to spend some time with you brothers and sisters to elaborate on that and say how can one avoid that actually but if I do that right now I won't be able to answer the rest of the questions so I hope that uh, they will remind me inshallah in the next episode to begin by discussing this matter in some more detail now uh, brother Ahmed from Nigeria asked about diplomats who have to shake hands with um, uh, women who are not mahram is this an, uh, an excuse? Um, I understand that the Prophet ﷺ was not any kind of uh, diplomat. He was the leader of the greatest ummah. And his hand has never ever touched the hand of a woman who is not lawful for him. 
under any circumstances, even during the bay'ah, when women, including her been to Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan, if we're talking about the diplomatic work, when they came to give the Prophet Sallallahu the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, they wanted to stretch their hands similar to men. He said, Inna la usafihun nisa. I'm sorry, I do not shake hands with women. Oh, he was embarrassed though. And uh, because he was doing what Allah the Almighty have revealed to him to do. He did not shy off. He did not say, I'm afraid if I tell them that they may change their mind, they may get offended. No. He is the one who stated and established all the possible women rights that any person could imagine more than 1400 years ago. But when the Prophet ﷺ does something, it is a matter of wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he forbade that. In the hadith of Ma'qil ibn Yasar, which is, uh, which is a sound hadith, he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, لا أن يطعن في رأس أحدكم بمخيط من حديد خير له من أن أن يمس امرأة لا تحل له. The hadith is collected by Al Imam Al Bahiqi and Al Tabarani. May Allah have mercy on them. He says Al Mikhiyat is an, uh, a sewing needle, big sewing needle. It will be better and easier for one to be hit with a sewing needle in his head. Uh, rather than shaking hands with a woman or touching a woman who's not lawful for him. All of that in order to block the means of committing an illicit act or leading to having a private relationship with a woman who's not lawful uh, for you. In fact, brothers and sisters, Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that Wallahi ma akhada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an nisa qat illa bima amrahullah wa ma masat kaffu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kaffa amraatin qat وكان يقول لهن إذا أخذ عليهن البيع قد بايعتكن كلاما. This is the statement of Aisha. He's never touched a hand of a woman who's not lawful for him. And whenever uh, they wanted to shake hands with him during the bay'ah, like men, men would come and say, بايعتك يا رسول الله, I give you the pledge of allegiance to do this and not to do that. So women wanted to do the same. Oh, what an honor to shake hands with the Prophet. He said, Qad kalama. I, I give you the bay'ah verbally. There is no need. I do not shake hands with women who are not lawful uh, for me. Is there any madhab which says it's okay? Can anyone say, well, because I'm Hanafi, it's different? Or Maliki, perhaps, in uh, North Africa, in Morocco, in Tunisia, and uh, no. Imam Malik is most strict in this regard. What about Shafi'i? What about Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal? All the four Imams, they have general consensus that it is not permissible. So we hear some people say, well, in case of uh, feeling secure again is the fitna. Yes, some of the Imams said, if a woman is a senile woman, لا تشتها, a woman who is you know, out of the picture, the imagination of uh, desire in her. A woman who is considered a grandma. It is permissible in this case to shake hands with her. But according to Imam Malik, is still any woman is a woman. Okay. So brothers and sisters, um, I love to follow the Prophet You want to call me whatever. I don't mind. I don't care. What I care about is before Allah the Almighty, who am I? What am I doing? On the day of judgment, when the Prophet ﷺ would call upon his followers, and the Prophet ﷺ would see some people standing distantly uh, in front of al hawd then he would say, oh Allah, my people. So Allah would say, no, 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 you don't know what they have done after you. They've changed. They've changed your religion. So the Prophet ﷺ would say, suhqan suhqa. Um, you know, it's, it's a terrible word that the Prophet ﷺ would disown those people with his vast mercy. So you want to be eligible for his intercession, love him. Loving him by following his actions, by following his teachings. I don't really care what people say about me as long as I'm trying to please Allah and his messenger. Peace be upon him. Brothers and sisters, Wallah, I'm sorry that we ran out of time. But inshallah, hopefully we'll have another opportunity to answer the pending questions and get some more. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me
need to pass the altar. 